Margaret Talia Lemons. I am the new lash tech in Southeast Missouri. I am the CEO of Sweet Lemons Beauty. Sweet Lemons Beauty is where you can come get dolled up while also being relaxed and comfortable. Please come check me out on my social media at Sweet Lemons Beauty. Thank you. As long as that red dot is flashing at the top of that thing, we're good to go. Okay? Great. Hey, what's up, guys? Back again for another episode of Kicking It with Coach Webb. I have one of my, like, legit, one of my favorite people uh, in the whole wide world as far as, like, professionally and everything. Uh, this lady's been kicking butt, Army recruiter for the Army National Guard. Uh, come to Kennett, uh, got some of our kids. She's partnered with JAG lots of times. Y'all know how near and dear JAG is to my heart. Uh, can't wait to get into the story. She was actually our JAG uh, guest speaker at our social dinner last year. Did an amazing job. Uh, just shared a lot into people's lives, and I can't wait to talk to her and get to know her even better here on the podcast. So, without further ado, I'd like to introduce uh, Sergeant Phoenix Horrell. Hello, hey. hi. Hey, thanks for being here. I'm super excited to get into this, and uh, yeah, just thanks for being here. So, all right, so let's jump into it. So, tell us a little bit about when and where maybe you were born at. So I grew up in Texaco, Missouri, population 810 at the time. So a small town, not too far from Kennett. Um, and you know, you had to, where you had to drive 30 miles to get to Walmart either, <laughs> Bob or Leopard Dexter. So uh, didn't, not a lot of things around us, you know, pretty much just grew up hunting and fishing. That's yeah. all there was to do, so. So did you go like over to Wapello Lake and the spillway and stuff when you were a kid or I, farm ponds or what? Yeah, so we have a we have a farm. I grew up on a farm and we have our, a pond and stuff. And But uh, we have our own land that I would hunt on. But I'd go to like Mingo and yeah, stuff. Yeah, Mingo, yeah. Yeah, so I loved going to Mingo and hunting especially. Yeah, yeah. that's awesome. Um, so, so when you are a little kid and you were out there doing all the outdoors and stuff, do you have any... Um, any cool stories about when you were like a hunter or fishing story? Maybe you caught a big fish or shot a cool deer or something? Yeah, so I've uh, I've caught some big fish in my life. Most of my most of the uh, hunting, it was pretty, you know I've never killed like a ginormous buck or anything. But um, so I've caught some pretty big fish once. I caught a like a 50 pound catfish on a rod and reel in the Mississippi River. For real? Yeah. So that was super exciting. How did it fight? Was it awesome it fighting it? It came right in. Like, I thought I had, like, snagged the biggest log. And then I saw that, you know, that tail flap, and I was like, oh, my goodness. So, um... And that picture's on the, the reel, isn't it? On the, the pictures that showed at the beginning. And hold you, is that the catfish? No, that's wrong? actually... So, that was the catfish that I caught with my hands. So I was noodling. You for real so caught one like that? Yeah. That fish like, as big as you are. That was the most fun I've ever had in my entire life. That beat skydiving any day. Really? Catching that, yeah, catching that fish with my hands. Did you have to like go under the water to get it or anything? I did. That? It was underneath a boat ramp. I had to like dive eight what? feet underwater. Um, by the way, I had never, I didn't know how to swim. This was like two years ago. I never knew how to swim until that day. And I was like, are we gonna have to swim in this water? And they're like, yeah. And I was like, I don't, I don't know how to swim. Um, but they said you're gonna learn today. So. <laughs> I did. And so I, yeah, eight feet underneath this boat ramp and. You just like stick your hand in there. They bite it. They bite down on it, and then you like grab them by the the jaw. I don't the thing. You know, I don't know. And you wrestle it up, and it doesn't really fight um, until it like sees the water, and then it goes crazy. So then it was, I guess, fun to watch. But someone was there to help me. Yeah. Like wrestle. Where's that? Like Oklahoma or something? It was in Tennessee. It was in the Tennessee, Tennessee? River. Really? Yeah, because it, I guess it's. I think it's illegal in Missouri. Yeah, I think, yeah, illegal in Missouri, that's why I was... Wow. But we returned the fish, like, we returned the fish really? to the hole because the, that's what, I think the daddy catfish is, that's what yeah. they're doing is... Yeah, I get it. It's kind of crazy because, like, the mom does all the eggs and the dad, you know, fertilizes yeah. them, but then, you know, it's weird to me because it's like, um, you know, the dad's, like, looking after them and stuff. So that's cool you put it back so then that way there can be more catfish and stuff. Right. I mean, you know, the flathead, they are pretty good eating, so I'm a little torn... Well, I'm a little torn on those. Yeah. Well, so yeah, I, the one that I caught on the rod and reel, um, I did eat that, and yeah. it was terrible. Like I really? mixed it; it was so muddy because again, it was the Mississippi River. Yeah. But you could taste it, um, and so I would have to like mix it in with like bass and stuff because it was really? so really terrible. Oh man, 
Dude, my dad can cook up some crappie like nobody's business. I mean, I'm like, I gotta give the guy some credit on this. Like, you talk about, and I, and I was like, we had, I had this birthday party last year, and, uh, you know, obviously it's pre virus and everything. And uh, my dad came down, and we had all these people cooking crappie, and uh, we had hot crappie. Uh, Mark Ellis made some hot crappie, which was really good. He took it like in this hot sauce, and then this, I don't know, if it, I don't know the order. It was hot sauce, and he had like a, like a little milk thing. And then he put the meal or flour, or whatever it was, and then he fried it, and it was good. But my dad's like, he cuts them really small, and then he, I don't remember what he soaks, man. I don't know if he goes beer, and then he goes cornmeal stuff, but I don't know. But dad's cat, dad's crappie, or I mean, they're, just, they're to die for. They're they're so good. Hmm. But uh, so that's pretty sweet. So, so you're an outdoors girl, do all kinds of cool stuff with that. I've seen you pictures like shooting your bow and stuff. So do you? Uh, do you do any like uh, competitions or anything with your bow, or are you just just shooting them and stuff like that? Like, so I used to. I used to do. Um, at first, I just like loved bow hunting and bow fishing and stuff like that. Um, but then it's like I really got drawn in on the the shooting and the accuracy and stuff. And so I would go to the bow shop pretty much every day after work, and I'd practice like shoot 100 times a day. And you know, we started doing ASA tournaments, um, but. I tore, my shoulder, I tore a, my labrum and my shoulder. It's probably about almost two years ago. I had surgery a year ago, and it's just the healing process has not been, you know, well, I guess. Yeah. So I kind of had to pick up other hobbies, you know, try. Right. But I, I hope to still go back to the bow shooting. I would love to do that again. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's like crazy because, like, when people, like, they first see you, you know, you come to do National Guard or whatever, and they're like, okay who's this pretty girl like trying to get out you know but then then you talk to you for a few minutes and you're like oh wait a minute like she's not all about just being pretty like like this is a tomboy i'm talking to like a tomboy girl too and like that's what i think is cool because like you're not what you always appear at the beginning and i think that's I try, cool yeah i like, try to break cool. all the stereotypes i mean for real like so that's cool like that's you know because then you have things in com things in common with lots of people you know especially you know outdoors things and things like that so I think that's really cool I thought that was one of you know and you're very relatable so that was cool so uh, all right so let's kind of move the move the podcast along a little bit let's talk about like maybe maybe some of your teenage years you know tell us a little bit about uh, you know just middle school high school what was school like for you growing up mm, so I was actually very um, let's see I was I was very much into church so I was all about, we had this uh, club called Fellowship of Christian Students, SES, uh -huh. and I was like president my senior year. I mean, I was very into the church. Um, yeah. yeah, so that's pretty much what I did. I would just like go to church Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night. Um, so I was, I was really into that. Um, other than that, I just kind of, I played softball. Not a basketball kid or no, anything I wish. like that? You know? I wish. I wish I would have started with basketball or I wish I would have played them all. But I played volleyball and softball. So. Uh huh. And that's pretty fun, everything? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, like that. yeah. That's good. We weren't the best, but. Hey, it's all right. It's not. Well, I was talking with uh, another guy a while back and we were talking about, like, you know, it's not necessarily all about that. It's about, like, uh, positive experiences, I think. I think we got to give kids the most amount of positive experiences that we can that hopefully they latch on to you know the, the values and the fun stuff rather than latching on to like the, a lot of the bad stuff that's out there and I think with a lot of the things you know with National Guard you, I've heard you talk lots of times you know you've talked about the things that it provides you know and I, I want to get into that a little more later but I think that uh, I think that's like some of the best things like just the positive experiences you know hey, being on a team you know having friends go Absolutely. through tough practices with you and stuff, you know, building those relationships. I think that's where kind of where we start with on that. So you have any friends in high school maybe you still talk to now? I don't. No, no? I mean, oh, okay, so I have friends. We actually just had our five-year class reunion. It's crazy. Um, like last weekend, and I saw my friends that I hadn't seen, which I graduated with a class of 46. So, uh, you know that, like, the high school yeah. reunion, of course, only, like, half the people are going to come anyways. Right. So, um, but my my best friends, they all went to MSU in Springfield. I stayed here in SEMO. So, well, I actually went to, like, the Sykeston campuses, so even more remote. Uh -huh. um, but, but we're still, like, friends, you know? Yeah. It's just friends that you only 
talk to. Yeah, it's, uh, it's tough. Some like, of the wrinkled ones. I know it like, uh, like the way the world is, I think about like, uh, like my own things. Like, you know, like 50 years ago, 100 years ago, the amount of places and travel that people went was so much less than it is now, you know, so like, you just meet so many more people now than maybe what you would have a long time ago. And then, you know, yeah, they're still your friends, but you had to meet all these other people and you've got all these things like, like I tried now, like I'm in my thirties and I've got like kids and kids is what changes things. I think like you can get a wife and you can still go do a bunch of stuff, just you and your wife, or maybe you and your wife and some of your friends, but you start getting kids in the mix, you know, like, uh, you know, I got one that's doing travel softball. So, you know, where we're going Saturday, we're going to travel softball. And like, I've got friends that are, you know, going to the river and doing things like that. And so, you know, if you want to be a good dad or a good parent, you know, you got to kind of, it just, it's just life is what kind of separates those times, I think. And, uh, you know, occasionally I long for that, I think, you know, seeing my old friends and things, but I mean, it's still pretty rewarding, obviously doing the other, but I, I just think it's life. Like those people, like I always think like if you go back and you see them again and you can just kind of pick up where you left off, like there's no weird, awkward, like, you know, then I think those are like some of your true true friends. Absolutely, yeah. Like, Absolutely. Yeah, my friend John, like we can go, I mean, we'll go years without seeing each other, and uh, like we'll pick up like like that, like you know, two, you know, just like just like we right. saw each other yesterday. You know, it's crazy. So you know, part of what we're doing is um, like if I'm going to do this, obviously it's a fun hobby and different things, but I want to bring a positive message out there to like kids, you know, because. You, we talked a bit about JAG and you know like how, you know my kids and I always said like, well, your first time you came and talked to our class, I was like, dude, Phoenix, like, you fit right in with us. You would have, you could have been a JAG kid. Like, I wish we had it. Uh, I wish. Um, and so it was just like this immediate connection. I was like, oh, dude, you're in, you're in the family. Like, gave you, I think we gave you a shirt at some point and we are like, if we didn't, we should have. I think maybe we didn't, I don't know. If we, did we give you a shirt or did we not give you a shirt? I don't know if we had one in your size oh. but left it. I don't think we did. I'm not even sure yet, but we're gonna work on it. Um, I think I meant. I think I meant to, and I looked around and I didn't have the right size. I think I had like larges and up, so that wasn't gonna work. But, uh, but you know, part of being in Jag is you have to have barriers and you have to have like um, different things have happened to, to overcome. And I think that is like the coolest part of your story. Not not so much the barriers that you had, but the fact that no matter what freaking happens to you. Like you still just kick ass and like do things. It's like, it's the neatest thing. And so, you know, and you gotta get into like something like nothing too personal or whatever, but people need to know that like there's other people out there that have these barriers that are still successful. Like I think that's, you know, that's the true story. I mean like, you know, people with all these things that are handed to them and like then they go off to be successful. Well, congratulations, you should have been successful. But the, the story that I find fascinating is the people who, are successful no matter what you know they have yeah. bad things and they're like wait a minute they still ha are successful yeah. so maybe could you just touch just briefly on some of the barriers that you've had you know and you know like I said you didn't make super detail but just right. just a few barriers so that we can talk about all the cool stuff you've done too because that's where I mean that's where you make your mark I mean that's where people want to I think that's where a lot of these kids are signing up for National Guard because they're seeing why they're just they're attracted to you versus not not you physically but like, like the, tan the was, tangibles yeah like yeah that? but like they see that you're overcoming oh. things and they see what it oh. provided for you yeah i would hope so and yeah. then they're like oh i want that too like i know my kids that went national guard you know because you you signed up one jack kid for sure from kennett and then you had a couple other kids that were on the one kid that two kids ended up being on the track team and those were some of the things that they were talking about why they signed up or the things that it provided. And we'll get into that, but just hit, hit a little bit about some of the barriers growing up. Yeah, so, um, I don't, I mean, it wasn't, it wasn't easy for sure. I, uh, you know, my parents got divorced when I was two. My mom left, um, and so my dad was the one that raised us. I have an older brother, um, and he, so we grew up, my dad was an alcoholic, um, and, it, it made for like a rough childhood. I was always kind of having to like lean on other people's parents to provide transportation for me so I could go to these sporting events and I could, um, you know, go to church and all these things. So that was, that was rough for me. Um, and then my older brother, he eventually moved out. He got emancipated. Um, 
So that's pretty much where, I don't want to say like did on the family, but he pretty much did um, just because our life was tough. Um, so he, then it was just like me taking care of my alcoholic dad, it seemed like, in high school. And it was just like I would come home from high school, get off the bus, and have to like, you know, take care of my dad who was passed out and had to make sure he got up. He worked nights, so I had to make sure that he got up and, you know, at night and I had his coffee made. And um, I just had to make sure that he was still able to provide the roof, you know, over our head um, just so, you know, so we could make it. So that was, that was tough. Um, I got pretty sick when I was in high school. I got, uh, which I won't really go into that, but I, it was really tough getting, um, just trying to figure out how to get better. And it was like for a long time, we didn't know what was wrong. And so that's like one of the most frustrating things is when you're going, you're, when you're in pain and there's no answers. And so um, that was a big struggle for me. And then, I mean, I'll, I, when I was 18, I got married because yeah. I thought I knew everything. I thought I was an adult. Um, so I got married, didn't tell my parents. Like, I just thought, I don't know what I was thinking, honestly. Well, I, I wonder, like, we, we were talking so much about environment, like, you know, some of the other guests and things. And, like, do you think maybe that was just, like, your body and your brain saying, like, searching for I want what, what it needed? You know, what, you, what your brain thought it needed? Right. Like, well, this, this will fix my problem? or Yeah, I mean... A kid like me, it's like, I just wanted a sense of belonging. Right. Like, I just wanted to feel wanted, and whether it was, I wanted a, the attention, and whether it was positive or negative attention, like, I'll take it yeah. um, kind of deal. And so, and really, I mean, like I said, it's kind of crazy to look back on now, even though I'm only 23 years old, like, I feel like that was a decade ago, you know? Yeah. Well, that's um, a good thing, though. I mean, you got I mean, because that means, you know, you're not sitting right in it anymore. Right. You know, if it seems right. like it's so far away, I mean, yeah. that's good. I mean, I think. I mean, because you kind of moved, moved yeah. away from it. I can't wait to hear all the rest of your story. I mean, once we get past, we got to get through this so we can get to the good parts. But, yeah, go ahead. I'm, I'm loving it. This is good stuff. Yeah, so um, really I just, <laughs> we were only dating for nine months. And I had joined, I had signed up for the National Guard when I was 17 years old. As soon as I turned 17, I don't know what made me want to do it. Like, nobody in my family has been in the military. It was literally just, I heard an announcement over the intercom, hey, your recruiter is in this classroom. If you guys are interested, go to it. And for some reason, like, before I knew it, I just, like, <laughs> up and started walking to the classroom. So, and then I was sold on it. Um, so at 17 years old, I joined the National Guard. And it was my, I was just starting my junior year of high school, so I had to wait to go to basic training until after I graduated my senior year. So I met that guy in between, and I knew I was about to leave for four months um, because I was doing my job training and my arm, like basic training on top of that, so it was kind of a longer period. And he was just worried about the boy situation. Obviously, the, yeah. the male to female ratio in the military is, you know, significant, like there's not a lot of females compared to how many males there are. And he was just like, I, you need to marry me or else I'm not gonna be able to trust you um, around all those people. Sure. And if not, if you can't do that, then I'm gonna leave you. And me, I, 17 years old, almost 18, I was thinking, well, okay, I gotta, I can't lose the love of my life. I mean, right. I'm gonna spend forever with this person. So I, I did it. Um, I got married in a courthouse. Like, I wore a camouflage shirt. He wore a camouflage shirt. It was pretty much the most podunk thing you could think of. But um. Um, it happened, and I didn't tell anybody kept it a secret because I was just thinking like okay we can just do this now and then maybe we can have like a ceremony and tell everybody else later and coming from Puxico getting married at 18 in secret like not I mean people would definitely did they find out I mean like did 
I mean, 46 graduates, you know, I mean, like. Oh, they found out, they found out when um, I got my divorce, so. So you were able to keep it until you got, you, you were kept it secret till the divorce. Mm -hmm. That's impressive. Just being in a small town and being able to keep that secret. Yeah, I didn't tell wow. anybody. Did he tell? I mean, maybe. No, he was, no. He wasn't from, he wasn't from Puxico. We oh, lived, Well, right. we lived, like, really close. Um, he lived kind of closer to Cave. But, oh, okay. so, but I mean, yeah, we just kept it a secret. Dang, that's yeah. impressive. Yeah, I, I so remember. you all need to tell some secrets. Obviously, you can tell <laughs> she got tell <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, I was kidding. Kind of, yeah. But that's impressive, though. Well, I was keep so, it in a small town. I was so worried about what people were going to think of me because sure. I mean, that's just that's just kind of how it works in small towns sometimes, you know. Yeah. And I just I felt like I had this I had to keep this good reputation um, because m my dad, you know, people knew my dad as like town drunk, you know, and I didn't want to be that, and I didn't want right. to be my parents, you know, so I wanted like, to make this, my own name kind of for myself, and so, oh, speaking of which, like, after I got married, I didn't change my last name, so. You just left it, okay. Right. I, that makes sense. But you, you keep it hidden, right? Right, yeah. so, yeah, so I didn't, I didn't change my last name until. Was the, was the husband upset about that, or he was he cool because he knew we were keeping it? He was upset. To the, I mean, he was upset because I eventually did change it. Um, okay. Horrell is my married name, my divorced name. So it's. So wait a minute. So. <laughs> okay. So what's your real name? Is that okay or no? <laughs> my, my alias, uh, Phoenix Richard. So. Phoenix Richard. Mm -hmm. So okay. Yeah. So, so then, so Horrell is your your married name. Yeah. Well, so the crazy the crazy thing is. Um, I kept, the reason I kept the married name was because he was, um, he was really on me about changing my, my maiden name. Um, and so the military is like a big process, I swear, it took like a year to even get the name changed. By the time I officially got my name changed in the military, I was already divorced. Oh so, no! Yeah, and then I started recruiting, so I was like, I don't want to... I don't want, <laughs> now it's like I want people just to know me as Sergeant Horrell, you know? Um, I don't want them to be like, oh, did you get married? You know, to go into Sergeant, you know. Oh, that's Richard. just a long story. Yeah, and I'm just like, wow. yeah, so no I just idea. kept it. I just kept it Horrell, and even though we're, we're <laughs> like, I hope that's okay, I don't know. I still feel like I made a, a name for myself, like a good. Yeah, absolutely. I don't feel like it's a, <laughs> I, mean, I, I don't know. It is a good name, because like. You know, I think the more and more, like, we're in the world and, like, people see that, like, hey, man, like, people ain't perfect. Like, I think, like, once people talk to you, they know, like, hey, not everybody's perfect, but this girl's for real. She's a hard worker. Like, you got to respect where she come from, where she's going. Like, I haven't met anybody on the, that hasn't been on that, like, that same wavelength with that. I mean, I haven't. I mean, if, they're, if they are, they haven't told me. So, I, I mean, for real. And, uh, <clears throat> Gosh, that's crazy. I, I, okay, I'll, I'm going to shut up. I'll just keep going. This is awesome. Yes. Okay, so um, got married in secret, right? Went to basic training then, um, and he was not happy about that. I mean, he. I wrote him letters every single day. Um, so he I, was still not happy even though he knew what he was signing up for? <laughs> kind of crazy. That is kind of crazy. I don't know. Yeah, okay. It's, it's really crazy. Um, so I wrote him every single day. I was like, you know, being in basic training, all you want is some letter from home, you know, oh, to, to yeah. comfort you. Absolutely. Um, so I like kept waiting. I was getting letters from my mom and my dad. Um, I'm like, I remember writing all my letters to my mom and dad, like said, hey, why isn't, you know, my husband, well, they didn't know I was married. Why isn't this boy writing me? Like, where is he? Do you guys know? Can you guys tell him to contact me? You know? So he sent me one letter in basic training. And I remember getting it, and I was really excited, and I opened it up, and it was just like, you know, I don't trust, I guess they had on Facebook, so they post these pictures of your training, and so your family can keep up with you. Um, obviously, you're, we weren't allowed to have our phones or anything, um, so they just had these pictures to go off of, and I guess I was... Obviously, you have to work with a team. You have to work with males. We were doing an obstacle course or something, and uh, I guess there was another boy in the picture. I don't know. 
and he was just like, I don't, I can't believe you, I don't trust you, you're, you're this, this, that, every name under the sun you could think of. Again, this is so kind of childish to think of, but this is what happened. And he was just like, I am leaving you. And I just couldn't believe it at the time. It was like this person that I thought that I loved, that it's my new husband that I was going to spend forever with. And he just like was ready to give it all up so easy. And I don't know. So I was heartbroken. Um, and I don't know. Eventually towards basic, the end of basic training, the end of my job training, he like came back in the picture. And he showed up at my graduation, which I was really surprised. I was like, uh, I thought you, whatever. So yeah. he was there. Um, we decided to, because I didn't believe in divorce. Again, I was very. Yeah. Um, the FCS? Yeah, like, yeah. yeah, I just was my beliefs and stuff. So of course I was going to work it out, even though that was very upsetting. Going through hell, I sure, sure could have used the support mm -hmm. at the time. But it wasn't until after basic training that things got rough. I guess he just like couldn't get over the thought that I was doing something bad, I don't know, which is impossible to do basic training because like you are not allowed to, as a female, you are not allowed to talk to a male, you're really? not, you know. Yeah. Are you guys like separate barracks and all this stuff? And right, and there's constantly people on a watch like, and I don't know what it is about basic training, but everybody tattles, tattles to really? each other, I swear, <laughs> yeah. I don't know what it is. Um, but there was just like absolutely no way. That, like how many people were in your barracks? It's like, you know, because like you're being a, you're a girl there, so I, the numbers, is there a lot in there or not very many? We only had, um, in my company, we only had like 20, 20, maybe 30 girls, females tops. Um, we had 250 altogether, so the rest okay. were. So know, do you guys have like one big old, like you, like, you know, like you see on TV, is it like that? Is that what the barracks look like where you sleep and all that? Like it's yep. just a whole bunch of beds in one big room? Mm -hmm. Yeah, really? we had a. Uh, of like a hundred year old building so we were the last company in this old building and it was rough but yeah we would have a bay and there was like 10 bunks in each bay and all females obviously uh -huh. so the females stayed on the bottom floor the males stayed on the top there was drill sergeants in between um oh, okay so i mean like yeah it was just a, even, was, even if they were wanting to be bad or you know i guess be bad but like you know fool around or whatever, it would be I'm incredibly telling, difficult or, you, or it's, completely impossible. It's impossible. I hear stories, but like I'm like, that's, I just don't believe it's true because it was impossible then. I just don't see how it could really? take battle, battle booze is what they call it, but <laughs> was, that's not possible. Okay. So, um, anyways, after we got back, after I got back again, the trust issues were just like really bad um, and it just started getting really emotionally and physically abusive, um, which was very surprising. And again, I just didn't know what to do in this situation. I didn't, I just was kind of in disbelief. And again, with my beliefs, I, I was like, I can't leave them, you know? But I remember, so again, my parents didn't know I was married, right? Right. So um, I was living with my dad and he was staying with me. Um, I'd see my dad like once a week because, of, because he worked nights. Um, and we just like didn't run into each other a lot. So I remember one time I had this like this black eye and I had some bruises on my neck um, and my dad like we ran across each other or whatever and he's like what is that why do you have a black eye and at this point I was like really kind of scared you know I was like I know I need to be out of this situation but I don't know how to handle it I should probably tell somebody so I told my dad I said dad um, I'm married and I need help getting a divorce. That's how I got the bomb. Oh my God. Yeah. How'd that go over? <laughs> Lead balloon or what? Uh, no, no, he like didn't believe it, but my dad is the kind of person where it's like, if you get yourself into a situation, you're on your own kind of. And yeah. I honestly respect that now, looking sure. back at it, because I mean, yeah, like you, in life, when you, you make this bed and you have to lie on it, yeah. you know, you don't get out of these things. So I appreciate my dad being so, um, out of, like, <laughs> I guess I appreciate him not helping me as much. He did, like, lead me to the right person and, and help me get that started. Well, that's so. good. I mean, like, you know, because, I mean, I think that's important because in, like, I was talking, like, uh, when my brother went to college and he had it paid for when he went and he just, 
he didn't go to class, he got a bunch of F's. And then uh, my mom, who was like, was like, oh, you made your bed. And she was saying that you made your bed, you're going to lie in it. And, uh, you know, made him pay the money that he was supposed to back. And then made him pay a whole nother, his whole next semester he had to pay on his own before he could get back to using his voc rehab. And, and uh, you know, he was talking to me. He's like, that's the best thing that mom did for me was making me claw my way out. Because, like, I mean, hell, because, like, you see people that have somebody else do it for them, it's like they never learn, you know. It's like, right. So, so maybe, like you said, maybe that was good. That way you could learn on your own. Oh, yeah. My dad's yeah. always been about me learning, <laughs> learning on my own. Yeah, that's good. But, yeah. Um, other than that, well, because the craziest part was, so I, like, filed for the divorce, right? Uh -huh. And there was, like, a two-month period in between. Um, and then, like, two weeks before the divorce got finalized, um, of course, my silly self was like, oh my gosh, of course, like, as, as tough as my life is with him, it's even worse without him. Again, that sense of belonging, like, I didn't have anybody right. at this point. Yeah. Um, so, I got back with him, being the smart kid that I am. So, two weeks before the divorce. Was you, finalized. You changed your mind. Right, and then I told the lawyer, I'm like, I don't want to go through with it anymore. Of course, Dang. my dad was like, okay you're out of here, like, good luck. You, you think yeah. you want to be an adult? Like, go be an adult. Um, yeah. So, me and my husband moved out together to Morehouse, the great city of Morehouse. Morehouse, really? Yeah. So Morehouse, tell, uh, just, I know where Morehouse is, but tell, uh, a lot of people may not because it's so small. Yeah, right? it's in between, it's in between Dexter and Sykeston, even smaller town than Puxico, for sure. Yeah. Um, not the best. Gosh, well, yeah. I'm trying to think. What's Sorry. the population of Morehouse? I mean, it ain't big. I don't know, probably like 200. Yeah, I mean, it's tiny. Tiny, tiny. Yeah. But uh, it was, I don't know, I think I was working at, I was about to get a job at Southeast Hospital as a nurse assistant because I was going to go to college for nursing. Uh -huh. um, and he worked at WW, okay. which is in Dudley. Dudley, yeah. Yeah, so. Um, I hear that's a good place to work, actually. Okay. Starting I've, out. I've heard, like, really good things about WW. Starting work. out, most males around in this area definitely go to yeah. I mean, I mean, I mean you're going I mean it's just Monday through Friday and I mean most of the time they do it is yeah yeah but, but I hear it's a good place to work so yeah. anyway just go ahead I like to plug positive things when I hear about them so right. yeah, yeah yeah um let's see where so yeah we made that to Morehouse and uh I lived with him we bought this like brand new trailer. Probably had the nicest place in Morehouse, not Brad. <laughs> um, no, thank good good people sometimes. Yeah. Sometimes, you know, yeah. good people. But it was it was an experience. So living on basically things just got crazier from there. I it got very controlling. It was very difficult to get out of. Um, and thankfully I just like I won't even go into depth with that, but sure. thankfully um, my military family. So I was going to drill. After you get back from training, you start doing the one week in a month, two weeks out of the year. Mm -hmm. So I had these military friends that become your family, and they really were my family. The closest thing I, I ever had to family, still right. have. Um, and they, I think I had another bruise on me once, and the that Monday after drill that weekend, they came to my house. Um, it was in between classes because I was, I was in college and I happened to be home and they came to my house, they knocked on my door, I was like, what's going on? It was, it was like an intervention, you know? Yeah. And he was at work, my husband, and they started packing all my stuff up and they're, they, I was just like, wait a second, I don't want to go, I don't want to go, believe it or not, I, I love this person still. Sure. Um, and they're like, no, it's not, not an option, sorry. So, yeah. um, so they packed my stuff up and stuck a box of Kleenexes in my car and sent me on my way um, and I never looked back and so then I did get the divorce. You did go through the divorce. Yeah, but that was like a year later. So You took your time there. I mean, I think it's important for people to know, like, especially young ladies, I think, I think this is important because like sometimes girls get into, well, I mean boys too, but you see more, like the kids I deal with, you see more of it girls than you see boys, so like they think they're with a boy, it's a bad thing when they think, well, I love this person, I have to stay with them. I think that people need to realize, like, like you can be with somebody and love somebody, but realize that, dude, being with that person, like, in a relationship is probably not a good idea. Right. 
you know, it's like you still have feelings for somebody, like, you know. I mean, the teenage boys, I mean, that's tough being a teenage boy. You gotta look at the other end of it, too, like, you know. I mean, you got boys who are supposed to do right and treat girls right, and uh, they don't know what the heck they're doing. They don't know how to do it. Maybe they haven't had nobody model it for them, and so then maybe they don't treat the girls right. So it's tough, you know, and I, I think I see so many girls now, like, that come through a program or just in general that have that thought, same, same thought process, you know. And that's why I think your story's so good, because ultimately the family you made ended up helping you, and you were able to finally see, hey, wait a minute, I can do better. And, um, right. you know, so I think that's so right. important that girls can, sometimes they just need to take that, that first step, it's you know. It's scary, yeah, yeah. And it's so scary to think that, you know, to have to live without this person that you love, right? But, yeah. I mean, most people, you're going to have that feeling towards multiple people in your life, yeah. you know, and you, it's just, it's it's sucky to feel that, like to feel the, uh, well, you know, time heals, time heals all the way, like yeah. it really does, eventually, yeah. and it sucks at the beginning, but you'll be so thankful once you, once you did, and if I could give any advice to young females that want to get married young, think that they have life figured out, it would just be to just just wait a little longer. Just wait a little longer. I mean, what's what's the difference if you're going to spend the rest of your life with them anyways? You know, um, just wait a little longer. Yeah, and just see what happens. I mean, like, you know, because everybody's so young, you're still growing and learning. And I was, gosh, you know I what I mean? I like, like such a kid then. I'm yeah, like, I look back I, at when I was day when I remember being a kid. You know, when I look back on the things I did or the way I acted or whatever, at that time in my life, I remember feeling like, oh yeah, I'm. I'm big, you know, I'm basically grown, blah, yeah, blah, blah, everything. you know, yeah. yeah. And then I look back on that and I was like, man, that's pretty dumb. Like, what was I doing? Like, I made some yeah. dumb decisions too. So it's yeah. just, uh, it's crazy how that works. Mm-hmm. Okay, hey, so let's, uh, let's hit some positive up here because we have got a lot of positive, cool things to talk about. Great. So National Guard, like, so you just one day walked to the cafeteria, where the heck that meeting was, and just hooked you, the line and sinker, and you're in. But like, tell us a little bit about like, maybe maybe a little bit about basic or a little bit about like some of the things that you've learned through National Guard or what it's provided for you. Just give us a, give us some National Guard stories. Let's, let's hear some National Guard stuff. So it's definitely been the best decision I've ever made in my life. That's why I, I do what I do recruiting now because I, I fully believe in the organization. I fully believe in our mission and what we do. Um, and the great things that, how it can change your life. So I am a big representative of that. Um, basic training definitely helped instill some values in me and some discipline that I needed to grow up. Everybody needs this resiliency training. I am so big on the idea of resiliency training. I wish that I would have had that in high school. Um, and so I'm, I'm I was lucky enough to get it when I was still young, you know, but you learn about, you know, integrity, respect, loyalty, you know, personal courage, all these things, and then you learn about discipline, waking up super early in the morning, and how to make your bed, and all these little details, but it's like those, those small things add up to such a, you know, such, make a big difference, I guess, right. and so I loved the values and the discipline that it instilled in me. I loved the family that I got from it. I mean, you see a person wearing that, you know, army green uniform and you're just like, automatically that's my brother and sister. I understand that, like, I, we can relate on a level that other people just don't understand. Right. Um, and after all the army schools that I've went to throughout the years, my family, like the awesome thing about the army is it just grows. You know, your family just grows. And I know I have networks all over the United States you know, even in other countries. And that's an awesome feeling to know that, you know, hey, if I go to Florida one day and I'm stopping by, you know, I've got a a buddy that lives in Dustin that I could go and see or stay at while I'm, you know, doing something else. It's just, it's so neat to have all these networks and you're this big family, so. So that's cool. So, so, like for instance, with Jag, I was talking to a kid uh, just the other night about he called me and was like just feeling lost you know he's like i don't know what to do like you know he thought about doing military news you know when he was in high school and he's a jack kid and then thought about doing college ended up not doing either went straight to work which there's nothing wrong with that 
but he's like, man, I'm lost now, you know, and he's just, he moved away, and he's like, man, I just, I don't know, I just don't know what to do. I'm like, screw it, dude, go back and join the guards, I told him, and, uh, but that's, that's what it provides, isn't it? Like, if you're lost, like, you need somewhere to go, you need, you need a family, like you said, like, you're going to make that. And like, it'll, help, it'll most likely help point you in the direction of figuring out what you want to do and where you want to go. Yeah. Yeah, and um, it, then it makes you realize that you're you're capable of doing things that you didn't realize that you were capable of yeah. doing, conquering your fears, you know, with some of these obstacle courses. And um, it's just, it's the most amazing experience. But yeah, I mean, it, it provides, obviously we have over 150 jobs, so... You know, whether you just want something to do for fun, like some of the boys here in Kennett, um, some of my troops, they, most of them are doing combat engineers, so that's where you like blow stuff up. Nice. Because I know that they're going to college, um, so that they, they decided they wanted to do something fun, because the Army does have fun jobs. Uh -huh. And then I have some people that are just hands-on, blue-collar kind of people, mechanics, you know, they want to be a mechanic, they want to be heavy equipment operator. Okay, so they go and get their certification that way, and now, they're, they're certified for the civilian world, and they used the military to get there instead of having to go to two years of technical school to get all those certifications. Yeah. And so, then you have people that um, use it for the college, you know? Yeah. So, so like one of mine, and that's where the JAG one, that's what she said she's using that for, so that's good. Absolutely, free college. Yeah. The student loans are. Well, since we touched on college, let's look at uh, <clears throat> maybe some of the different, because like, guard versus going full-time at least in Missouri isn't there like if I remember correctly there's a little difference in how much money you can get for college is that right don't you get more mm -hmm. for the so, guard or, or no mm -hmm. so you're gonna they always say like any branch of the military is gonna be like we're gonna pay for all of your college 100% right. of your college well yeah but it's gonna take you're only allowing me to do 16 credit hours any active duty branch um, or reserve branch, anything pretty much besides the National Guard, um, is only going to pay for 16 credit hours a year annually. So that's really only a semester if right. 12 to 15 credit hours is a semester. So what about the other semester? So yeah, we're going to pay for your college, but it's going to take you twice as long, maybe three times as long to get there. Right. You might have family um, in between and then not be able to do it anymore. And so the that's kind of like a, for them that's smart. It sucks, and it, but like, how many people are really going to finish that by that time? Um, I mean, I bet, I bet the, I bet the people who started, I bet the success rate in that is significantly less than the people who go guard, just because of what you're fixing to tell them about the hours and stuff. What do you think? Yeah, yeah, most people definitely. I mean, I, I'm in my graduate school now online, and I'm literally the only person there that's under the age of or probably 40. I mean, most of them are all, you know how you have like introduction posts or whatever. They're all like, oh, I've served 20 years in the military. I'm about to get my whatever. Right. You know, they just now got their undergrad degree and it's just because they were active duty and they didn't have time. It's yeah. tough to have a full-time job, especially in the military, and also go to college. Unless yeah. you're just like motivated. I mean, I don't know how you'd be much more motivated than you are, but or these people, but anyways, tell us about what the guard does. He's you know, 16 hours military, you know, full time. What, what, how does a guard pay for school? Yeah, so the guard pays for up to 39 credit hours a year. Wow, so, that's a lot. yeah, again, most full timers go 12, maybe 15 hours each semester, and then you still have six, six, nine, nine credits left over. So you can take college classes, winter classes. I mean, college, summer classes, winter classes. Yeah. Um, so we, we pay for all of that, so you can hurry up and get that degree done, you know, focus on that. And then we also give them, you know, we have GI Bill, uh, their drill pay. So you can get up to $1,000 a month paid to you for free just by going to college. So yeah. you don't have to worry about that part-time job or a full-time job. You can just solely focus on your education, which is what I love yeah. about the National Guard. Which I think that's cool, too, because, like, you know, like, full-time military, they're like, ah, we got you anyways. So, you know, if you want to do this, we'll pay for it. But, but, you know, some, and, and I'm not talking bad about it. I think no, that there, there's um, so many great things about it. But, like, but with National Guard, it's kind of like the other one. Like, you're going to invest, if the kid, if the person's willing to work, like, you're going to invest fully in them as a person. 
and then then ultimately once they achieve what they're supposed to then you know then they're going to give back to the guard and you know right. just better that's overall right. like you know I, I think that's a cool you know i think that's cool i think that's cool about how that works like i've always thought that was um i thought that was neat how far it could provide so much you know and then all you got to do is the one week in a month two weeks a year yeah um, full time full time benefits for you know part time service it really can't be that so like what about like uh do you still get stuff like, like what if you teeth problems or whatever? Would they take care of that too? Mm-hmm. Yeah, so we have amazing, we have amazing insurance, health insurance. Um, I, I'm technically active duty for the National Guard, so I work a, a little differently now. But regular National Guard members, they um, have amazing insurance, it's very low compared to anything else, um, and they'll take they take care of you. We also have these like physical health assessments where. Every year they look at our teeth, and if you have like some, I don't know, some tooth that needs pulled or some filling, whatever, we'll do it on the spot, which is kind of weird. But um, yeah, I'll do it on the spot. We're gonna pull this out. Give me a shot. Yeah, you're like, oh my gosh, I just got three wisdom teeth pulled. Should I been, should I have been put under? <laughs> Listen, we didn't say. Uh, good service though. It's yeah. Nice. No, but yeah, we of course they take care of us too. So. See, so that I think that's really good with that part of it, um, and that's cool. You know, I just keep thinking about the people who may watch this, you know, and they're like trying to figure out like what's going on and whatnot. And uh, man, National Guard is a incredible way to do it. So, uh, all right, before we continue on, while we're right here in the middle of talking about National Guard, like let's say, let's say a kid watching this wants to, man, I'm thinking about maybe sign up. I want some more information on this. Like this sounds cool. Like, where would they go? Like, what could they do online? Who would they talk to if they wanted to? Uh, sign up to be in the National Guard or at least get more information? Well, there's, I mean, yeah, we have MoGuard.com, MoGuard.org, oh no, see, yeah, I'm not right. sure, but we have a, we have a website for the National Guard for people that are interested. <laughs> go, go to Google and type yeah. in MoGuard. Right, right. it'll yeah. give you the lowdown, yeah. um, or if you're local, if you're anywhere from the area of Dexter, all the way to Kennett, even a little, sometimes I'll go out to Blyville too, don't tell the Blyville yeah. recruiter, um, no, but, uh, well, I mean, obviously, I'm your recruiter. If uh, my contact information is everywhere, um, yeah. you can find us on Facebook. Super easy. Just I'll hook you up with the right person if, for some reason, you're out of my area. So, uh, see, that's good, and I, I just think that's something else that is just amazing about some of the stuff. All right, one of the things about you that I think is cool. Now that we're kind of we've plugged National Guard a little bit, I wanted to do that. But uh, tell us about these uh, these challenges, like. Uh, how how competitive you are. I'd like to hear more about uh, like these Me push up. Oh yeah, it's yeah. No. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like we I want to hear about these uh these challenges and then that you do. Like the plank challenges or these push up challenges I've seen you do or you've talked about like when you came to our class how how, how you're going to win and like you do. So yes. like, I don't hear about so it. So I uh, one time my drill sergeant said if you get your mind to leave your body will follow. And I don't know. If, I, I don't know if that quote will hit anybody like it hit me, but like it's so true. If you if you get your mind to lead, if you really believe in something, your body will do it. I mean, it's just it's just that. So I, um, out of all 250 people in the company, I had the highest PT score in basic training, um, female. So beating all those male spell. You yeah. beat all the boys. Beat them all. Yeah, I did. So I got a coin. It was cool. Um, I was very, but I didn't do it for the competition. Like that was, I did that for me, you know, to this prove to myself that I could that I could do that. Um, which is, I am all about proving stuff to myself. Sure. So, um, yeah, the push-ups. When it comes to talent, I feel like I only have two: um, shooting a <laughs> bow and push-ups. I don't know how or why, but I, the Lord blessed me with the ability to do push-ups. <laughs> so, and I know people are always like, "Well, she's little, you know, she doesn't have that much to." But I mean, come on, it's equivalent. Like, I'm yes, I might be little, but also look at these little needle arms. You know what I mean? Like, it's not easy, but I know I will win. I've never lost. I, I've faced, um, you know, college athletes. I've I've never lost in a push-up contest. I will always win, and they're always like, "Well, how many can you do?" And I'm just like, "One more than you." You know, and yeah. whatever it takes to win, I'll do that because I truly believe if you. Get your mind to leave. Right. So you kind of take that same um, 
mentality when it comes to recruiting? Like, I mean, like you, I mean, I, I've seen you lots of different places, but I mean, like, you recruit pretty hard, don't you? I mean, like, talk a little bit about that process and kind of what you do to get these kids to sign up for the guard or these adults or like, aren't you? I've seen you do lots of things. So like, what are, what's some of the things you do? I mean, recruiting is not easy. It is not an easy job. Um, you would think that people are just coming, knocking on my door to join the National Guard, to join any branch of the military. You think people are just knocking on recruiter stores, and it's not that way. Um, less than 1%, 0.5% of the United States population currently serves in the United States military. That's all branches combined. Really? Only 0.5%. So, it is not a lot of people, and um, so our, it's really tough to recruit. So yes, I'm doing everything that I can to, to recruit to meet my mission, sure, but yeah. I'm more interested in, hey, I'm trying to change lives here. Like that is my, I fully believe that is my purpose in life, is to change lives, and that's what I'm out to do, and I'll do whatever it takes to do it, you know? So if I can provide that opportunity to help people inspire them to show them that they have amazing potential then that's like i'm going to do anything that i can to do that and that's i mean i've been doing this i mean i think this is a excuse me i think like uh like i was talking with i talked with coach pixley and he was on last week he was on um, last week's episode and uh like i feel like in like in my own life and things like you like with what you're doing, like he talked about how, like he he's a coach at Dexter football. He's the Dexter football coach, and he was there. He used to coach at New Madrid and Kennett before then, but he uh, he went in, he went back to Dexter because you know he would beat them for a while when he wasn't there. And but Dexter football like made him into who he is, mm-hmm. you know, like it provided that for him. And so he sees those other kids, and that's what he wants to do, you know. And then like in my life, like football was something in him or something that made me who I was, you know, and you're like, well, I got to help these other kids, you know, and then, and then when Jack came into my life, it was like, you know, it was like, this, this, this is what I got to do, like, I love these kids, and like, you watch them, and it's like, it's amazing, and like, it's, it sounds like, like, the National Guard is that for you, like, it, it provided those things, and you're like, hey, no, like, I've got to not only give back to the Guard, but I've got to get these other people to do it, because look at, like, I know what you're saying when you say you want to give them that opportunity because, like, you look at Jag and you look at these other things and you're like, once it happens once or twice, like, once a couple kids get it, you're like, oh, my God, this is the best thing that's ever happened. Like, these kids, look, look at what uh, look at what could happen for them, you know? And then, God, I bet that's so rewarding for you when kids sign up and then you see them go off. And, and like, I'm going to tell you, like, you, you've helped try to recruit some kids that other people just have written off. I mean, I've seen you talk to some kids that, other people just written, written off. I mean, I can't share no names, you know, but, like, I mean, you don't I, care. Like, you'll recruit anybody. That, I mean, yeah, as long as you're called. Uh, yeah, as long, yeah, that's but, what I'm saying. Like, I you mean, don't look at, it don't matter where they come from. It don't matter some of their history. As long as they can qualify, you know, you're going to try to, you're going to try to get them what they need. Yeah, I want to help. I want to help them out. Yeah. Like, I want to. To help you I want to help you if you don't know what you want to do in life like I want to help get you there yeah let me hold your hand and I will like I always tell my troops I'm like let me make my mistake like make let me make your mis- okay learn from my mistakes let me make be the one that makes mistakes sure. so that you can learn from them um, and I'll, I'll just do like whatever I can to help them I am very I just love seeing people realize that they have more potential than they than they think they do, you know? Yeah, it's just yeah. the best on that. Gosh, so let's get a couple more questions in here before we, before we get off here. Um, let's talk about, I want to talk about somebody in your life that makes you incredibly happy. I know you're incredibly close with this person. Well, I guess person. Let's talk about your dog. My dog? Yeah, your dog. My- yeah, you see, you see pictures of you and your dog and like, tell us about your dog a little She's bit. She's a rascal. I don't know. She um she's been there for me though, you know. Yeah. Uh, like how how old how long you had this dog for? And what what is she? She's a golden retriever. She's Sorry. probably like who, a year and a half old. I yeah. said I've had her for a year and a half. She has been there when no one else has. So 
yeah, I moved out on my own. I've been completely alone, I guess, as long as I've had her. And she's, like, been, she's been there, you know? Yeah. When, when no one else has. Now, I love her, but she's wild. She's, yeah. she's <laughs> wild. And I just want everyone to know, if you're young and you're thinking about getting a dog, um, realize that, like, you have to be home every night, you know? You've yeah. got to be home every night. You've got to let them out multiple times a day. That's a big responsibility that I didn't, didn't, it, it didn't click because now I have to like drop her off at doggy daycare all the time, which is like expensive. I mean, it's like twenty five dollars a day, but yeah. I didn't realize how much I traveled for work until really? I got the yeah. So, yeah, but no, anyway, she's wild. I love her. We're a total team. She looks just like me, right? Yeah. Yeah, we got the same brown eyes, gold yeah. hair. Yeah, yeah, that's what I was thinking. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was gonna ask you about the shedding, but then I remember how much oh. hair my wife loses, and it, you know, like no. my two daughters. So. No, but the shedding is terrible. Oh, I bet. It's terrible. I've got yeah. that robot vacuum. I vacuum. And I'm OCD in my house. <laughs> um, so I vacuum constantly every day. Golden Retriever shed like crazy. I bet. Still, still your sweetheart though. Yeah. So let's talk about uh, friends, because I got to meet one of your friends um, when you came and spoke for Jag. Uh, tell us a little bit about like your your partner in crime here, your your, your, your oh, best bud. Yeah, oh, Katie B. Yeah. So she's been there. She, we actually met through SEMO. They um, sent us, we, at the Sexton campus, they gave us a scholarship to go to Europe. And so me and Katie, they gave like two people from the remote campuses scholarships to go take a class in Europe. So we did. We got to go to like four different countries together, which wow. was awesome. We also, we were both very young and we stuck by each other. So that's where I met her. Where, uh, what countries did you get to go to? France, Germany, Belgium, the Netherlands. That's cool. Uh, yeah, it was uh, awesome. Awesome, yeah. So awesome, yeah. And so it was super cool to experience that with one of your one of my best friends. Now I just met her then, uh -huh. but you become close to people really quick like that. And she's been there for me ever since. And we're like ride or die, shake yeah. and bake, yeah. kinda. <laughs> Ricky Bobby, that's right. Yeah. Did uh um now she's a teacher, isn't she? Yeah. Yeah, at Jackson, right? Mm -hmm. That's right. Okay, cool. Yeah, that's cool about that. All right, so Two more questions. We got three more questions total. Okay. Um, where do you where do you see yourself going with all this stuff? What are you gonna Where are you gonna like? What's your What's your end game here? What do you What do you think about going in your future? Um, you know, I say right now, I oh, the military might hear this. Um, I plan. I really would love to be a CEO for a Fortune 500. Okay. No joke. Yeah. Um, I'm obsessed with Elon Musk. And uh -huh. his his ideas, his company. So we've got like Tesla, SpaceX, and Neuralink, which uh -huh. is the one I'm crazy about. So I would like to do that. Um, <laughs> sorry, Raiden, <laughs> back here, man. Go ahead. I'm sorry. That, that, that hasn't happened yet. <laughs> yes. So maybe Fortune 500 company. That'd yeah, be exciting. I, mean, I don't know. I might want to stick with the military a little bit longer. But either way, I don't want to help people. I want to lead people. Um, so I'm going to, and then again, that company is just, they have big ideas, big goals to help people, um, which would make a, a great, yeah. uh, I mean, again, I'm, I definitely want to work for an organization that I fully believe in, you know, and I fully believe in the National Guard. Yeah. I might, I mean, obviously I can do both if I just wanted yeah. to do the, it on the, you know, part-time end, but I'm not sure. All I know is I gotta get there as soon as possible. It's like that's why I work so fast and so hard, and that's why I'm going to college full time and yeah. working full time. Is I've got life's a change. I know it's kind of weird, but no, I, I mean, really I, like I think about like, like okay, like after you teach Jag, like it would be. I tell people like it would be hard to go back to teaching a regular class after you've done this. But just like. That's like what you're talking about. Like after you've helped people and doing these types of jobs where you're helping people and you see them get better, you know, yeah. it would be hard to go back to just making money. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like it would be hard to, so I get what you're saying when you're like, yeah, well, I mean, I want to help people. Like, I get it because you're like, not that make money ain't great. I mean, like, but it, but it's money. You know what I mean? Right. But like, Growing up without yeah. that, uh, growing up yeah. without that, you know that it's you know that you can totally survive without. I mean, I know I I can survive off of ramen noodles, yeah. you know. And so, um, I honestly, money has not been a 
thing for me. I mean, I, I live a comfortable lifestyle, and I'm sure. proud of it, but I, what I want to do has nothing to do with that. But yeah, you're right, like, yeah. comfortable, comfortable-wise is important. So. Yeah, I mean, it's just a, yeah, I think it's so neat. All right, got two questions left for you. Um, I've always asked this one, I always think it's a funny question. We've had some really great answers on this. Um, if you could have one superhuman power, what would it be? Boy, that's a tough one. I don't know. Um, I, okay, this is going to sound really weird. I would like to be able to feel what people are feeling legit. Like, I would like to be able to, like, tap in and know exactly what they're feeling. Maybe not feel their pain, but just, like, I mean, whatever. But if I could just really relate to somebody, like, super intense empathy. I know that's like, pretty kinda weird. Like, kind of like on like Professor X on the X-Men, the dude in the wheelchair that could like get inside their head and kind of know what's going on maybe. Yeah, I guess. That'd be kind of cool. Yeah, I don't yeah. know. Yeah, I mean like. I don't know. Should I pick flying? No, I no, no. See, like I'd like it because like we've had, you know, when we talk to people, we've had a lot of flying and we've had uh, super speed. Super speed. <laughs> we had uh, one of them wanted to have time travel as their superpower really and good. so you know but I think that uh no I think that's really cool because then you could help them and you could do other things you can you could know maybe you could know the truth before you know you know somebody thinking one thing and saying another or something you know maybe you could know yeah, I don't know all right so I think it's been a really great talk but I want to share I've always asked everybody the same question because I'm gonna make another video later on about this sharing these answers so we work with kids, young, older kids mainly. Um, you know, you have more young adults than I do, but uh, people that are fixing to go out in the world, you know, the thing about this, the thing that I like is most people who've come on the, the channel have all been people who made it in life or making it in life. And it doesn't matter the circumstances. And like in my brain, I'm like, well, why? You know, like, how come these kids make it and these other kids don't? You know, I mean, maybe it just is what it is, but like, uh, kids are fixing to go out in the world, you know, and you, you're out in the world right now and you're not that much older than them and, uh, you know, I think you do a wonderful job. Um, I mean, we've talked, I mean, I, I, I think I think you do a great job. And uh, what's one piece of advice maybe you give some of these kids who are just now about to take off into the world and figure it out for themselves? What do you think? One thing, most important thing. The most important thing I, I feel like is not taking the um, not taking the victim mindset I think is something that's going to help people get far in life taking ownership like problems will always happen problems like they never stop real life is full of problems after one comes another um, and you're gonna have to you can like I guess who knows why you get knocked down you know it might be somebody else's fault but like you are responsible for picking yourself back up so no matter what you've been through in the past, it's on you to how you're going to respond to it. You know, it's on you to fix that, I guess, if, if that makes sense. Yeah. And so if, if people, instead of, like, dwelling on possible problems and having anxiety on, about these problems, if they just work on finding the solution, you know, one at a time, whatever that problem is, find that little solution, you know, what is going to help me get over this obstacle right now. What can I do right now that's going to help me get over that tomorrow? And I think that that, honestly, if people can get over that, just like I have, like that's just whatever I can do to make my tomorrow better, you know, whatever I got to do today, that's what I do. That's good. That's a good piece of advice. Thanks. You know, it's crazy. We've had lots of different people have said lots of different things, and that's a uh, that's the first time we've had that one, so that's a good, that's a good. really good piece of advice. Uh, I just want to thank you again for coming on the show. Um, can't wait to put it out so other people can hear the cool, the cool stuff you bring to the table, and hopefully, lots of people want to sign up for National Guard. I think that it's such a great program that, that you're a part of, and uh, I'm glad that we're buds. And I sure appreciate you coming on, and I look forward to maybe working with you in the future. Yeah, sounds good. Thanks for letting me be here. Yeah, thanks a bunch.